Hello ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donahue here again, this time taking a look at 4.2b exchange reactions and ionic equations. So our objective will be to describe what exchange reactions are, predict if they will occur, and write out complete and net ionic equations. So, metathesis reactions. Uh, what are they? They're also known as exchange reactions because they're going to exchange partners. So it appears as if the positive and the negative ions switch partners. So here's a generic formula, right? So we have A bonded with B and then X bonded with Y. And then what happens in these exchange reactions is they switch partners. So A is going to switch with X. Uh, and then it's like B switch with Y and you end up with A and with Y and X with B. So you can see they switched partners. So that is, that's what these are. All right. Yeah. So examples would be like NaCl aqueous plus AgNO3 becoming NaNO3 and AgCl solid. So you can see that they switch partners. The AG was with NO3, but the AG ended up with CL. The NA was with the CL, and the NA ended up with NO3. They switch partners. All right, so here's another example. What it might look like? You can see again that the CO3 uh, ends up with the H instead of the calcium. You switch partners. So example reaction, let me visualize it a little bit for you. So we have it written out like this, right? We got sodium chloride aqueous. That's what that AQ stands for silver nitrate aqueous becoming sodium nitrate uh, aqueous and silver chloride solid. So the first thing that happens is the aqueous solutes dissociate. So we start with, you know, these two things and they're aqueous. So they're going to break apart into the separate ions, right? They're going to be separated now. And now they're able to move about and meet new people. Uh, just like the silver and the chloride just did. You get, get new pairings can form, right? They're flown about. They're ready to mingle. And then everything switches up. And then what happens is new soluble pairings you can think of as splitting again. They don't stay together. They're not very interested in each other. And they, you know, stay dissolved because they're soluble. Whereas the new insoluble pairings will precipitate as a solid to the bottom of the solution. So because they're stuck together and insoluble, right, they are insoluble, they're going to become a solid. And they generally give it time and it'll sink to the bottom, right? It looks something like this, right? When you first do the reaction, everything's kind of suspended, and but it's really just a bunch of solid that's stuck there. And then you give it some time, goes by, and then it all settles. And there is your precipitate. Your, you know, that would be the, the silver chloride, if you will. So will a reaction occur? How do you figure that out? Well, first thing you got to look at the ions present and check the solubility rules for the new pairings. You know, if these were to do the whole wife swap kind of thing going on, are you going to get any lasting pairings? So let's take a look at this reaction, right? So whoop, too far. So I see that I have calcium chloride aqueous and sodium carbonate aqueous. Well, if I rearranged and swap partners, what I can end up with is calcium carbonate and sodium chloride. So I'm going to check how are these pairings in terms of solubility. So I'm going to look for calcium or carbonate. I found carbonate. It's generally insoluble except for when it's with the things that are always soluble. Well, you know, calcium isn't any of those exceptions. So this is going to be a solid. That's going to be our precipitate. Right. So let me check the NaCl. I already know that I'm going to get a reaction because I got a precipitate. So there is definitely a reaction. Uh, but let me check the sodium chloride. Well, sodium is group one ion, and they are soluble always with no exception. So this is going to be aqueous. So reaction definitely occurs because one of our products is insoluble. It becomes a solid. So let's take a look at another example. We've got sodium chloride with lithium bromide. Well, let's see what happens if I were to switch partners, switch the sodium and the lithium. I'm going to end up with LiCl and Na. BR and let me check the solubility rules. I look for Li or Cl um, and Cl minus is soluble except hey guess what Li isn't any of those exceptions so this is going to be soluble or aqueous. You can also go hey lithium is a group one ion and they're soluble without exception as well so I get the same same thing that way. NaBr same thing sodium is a group one metal so it is soluble without exceptions which tells me that it is also going to be aqueous. So these things are going to stay dissolved. They're not going to find a new pair that they're going to bond with and stay as a solid. So this, um, you know, no reaction because there's no insoluble pairings for the new products. All right, what if I had lithium iodide and silver nitrate? So I could switch partners again, switch the lithium and the silver, and I can end up with AgI 
and LINO3. So I'm going to look for AG or I. I found I right here, and it's soluble except, hey, I have the exception, which tells me that this is insoluble, uh, which means that it's going to be a solid, which means I'm going to get a reaction. I don't even have to check the other one, but I'm going to, just so you guys can see how it's done. So I can check lithium or nitrate, and I found nitrate, and it is soluble without exception. So this is going to be aqueous. So AQ, which means it's going to stay dissolved. Uh, but because we get this silver iodide is a solid, then we definitely get a reaction. All right, so ionic equations. How do we write these things out? So here's an example reaction, like the one right before. I got lithium iodine and silver nitrate giving me uh, lithium nitrate and silver iodine, which is my precipitate. It's a solid. So first type of equation we're going to talk about is the complete ionic equation. And all that does is show all of the ions present, hence the whole term complete. You're showing everything. So, well, the aqueous means that it's really lithium ion and iodide ion, right? So I got to write everything out. If it's aqueous, I got to write them as individual ions. If it's a solid, then I need to make sure that they're stuck together as a solid. So it's going to look something like this. I got lithium plus ion, iodide minus ion, silver plus ion, and nitrate minus ion. All these are aqueous because they're dissolved, which is why I'm writing them separately. Because in solution, they split up, right? They, they dissociate. So that's why we're going to write them separately. And then the products. Well, I get lithium nitrate, which is aqueous. So it's really going to be lithium ion and the nitrate ion. And then the AGI solid. The solid tells me it doesn't dissociate. So i got to write it as just one thing, AGI solid. Second type uh, I'm sorry, not to the equations yet. I want to introduce a new term to you guys, spectator ion. So if you guys know anything about spectators, there are things that just watch, right? You go to a football game, you are a spectator. You're not a player. You're just watching it. You're not involved in the game at all. You're just watching. So spectator ions are ions that are present at the beginning and the end of a reaction because they're not involved. They're not changing. They're just there. So if we take a look at our complete ionic equation, you can see the lithium plus ion, and it stays the lithium plus ion. It doesn't react. Same thing with the nitrate ion. It stays the nitrate ion. It stays dissociated. It doesn't find a new partner that it sticks with. It still dissolves. So those are spectator ions. They're not involved in our reaction. And they're important because when we want the net ionic re equation, which just shows only what changes in the reaction and excludes the spectator ions, we don't want those there. We want to know well, what's actually happening. Ignore the spectators. What's actually going on? So what you do is you just kind of cross out all the spectator ions, right? So if it's a spectator ion, you cross it out, you're not going to include it. And then what you're left with is the net ionic equation. So the net ionic equation for this would just be the iodide ion and the silver ion giving you AG solid. So that's actually what's happening, all right? So how to get the net ionic equation? You write the balanced molecular equation. Then you rewrite it to show the ions that form. You write out that complete ionic equation. Then you identify and cancel out any spectator ions, just like I showed you, right? So let's do this one together. If I have calcium chloride aqueous and sodium carbonate aqueous, giving me calcium carbonate solid and sodium chloride aqueous. Well, first let's do the complete ionic equation. So I get calcium ion because it's aqueous and I get two chloride ions because it's aqueous. And then I get two sodium ions because it's aqueous and I get a carbonate ion, and then I get a calcium carbonate solid, so I know I'm going to just write CaCO3 as a solid, and then I'm going to get uh, two Na pluses because it's aqueous, so two Na plus and two chloride ions. So there's my complete ionic equation. Now to get my uh, net ionic, I got to look for any spectator ions. What's there? in the reactants and in the products. Well, let's see. I have two chloride ions and two chloride ions, so I'm gonna cross those off. And then I get two sodium ions and still two sodium ions, so I can cross those off. And what am I left with? I'm left with calcium plus two and a carbonate becoming calcium carbonate solid, right? And you know, just know I was being lazy and didn't go back and write all those AQs in this equation, and I really should have, but I didn't. So just know that you should. All right, so to summarize, uh, what are exchange reactions or metathesis, sorry, metathesis reactions? 
Uh, why do they occur? How can you predict if they were, will occur? And what are the net ionic equations and how do you write them? So that's what you should be able to do after all this. I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.